We covered the principles of direct fire control and some provisional SOPs. Now let's talk about the process itself. The main thing to remember here is that there are two critical actions that we have to get done. Rapid and accurate target acquisition and the massing of fires. Target acquisition is the detection, identification, and location of a target in sufficient detail to permit the ethical, effective, and efficient employment of weapons. Massing entails focusing fires at critical points and then distributing the fires for optimum effect. And these actions involve the following steps. We have to identify probable enemy locations and determine their scheme of maneuver, determine where and how to mass fires, orient your forces to speed the target acquisition, and then shift fires to refocus or redistribute. So first, identify the probable enemy locations in their scheme of maneuver. This will be based on the estimate of the situation. And what's important here is the analysis of the terrain and the enemy force. What kind of cover and concealment does the terrain provide the enemy? What is the enemy bringing to the fight? This supports the commander's visualization of the enemy and how they'll attack or defend their terrain. Consider the enemy's support by fire locations. Their fields of fire, cover and concealment, and defilade. Then how they'll maneuver, mounted or either dismounted. Next, we determine how and where to mass fires. We have to mass the fires to achieve decisive effects. We talked in another Doctrine Digest on focusing fires and distributing the effects to go, and so you can go and watch that. But the commander will determine where to focus the fires based on the situation and the concept of the operation. Most often, these are locations identified as probable enemy positions or points along likely avenues of approach where the company can mass fires. And then the commander will use the TRPs to concentrate and distribute those fires on their enemy. So we also want to consider likely support by fire positions and the maneuver areas for the enemy. Then you want to orient your forces to speed target acquisition. We have to be able to engage the enemy with direct fires and we have to do that quickly and accurately. By orienting friendly forces on the enemy locations and likely avenues as approach, we speed up our ability to engage. Conversely, if we don't do this, it's likely that the enemy will engage first. The clock direction orientation method, which is in most unit SOPs, is good for achieving all around security, but it doesn't ensure that friendly forces are most effectively oriented to detect the enemy. So to achieve this orientation, the commander uses those TRPs to designate sectors of fire to assist target acquisition. You know, orient fire to the probable enemy location, ensure complete observation and fire coverage, and then easily shift fires. Next, we have to shift fires to refocus and redistribute. The commander shift fires to refocus and redistribute the effects based on the evolving estimate of the situation as the fight happens. And here's an example. Let's say the enemy establishes a support by fire position near TRP2, and then first platoon shifts fire to suppress. The enemy has another support by fire position near TRP3, and second platoon shifts fire to suppress. And then finally, the enemy assault force uses their avenue of approach two to close in for their assault. So then third and second shift fire from their previous TRPs and then fire on TRP five. You notice how these TRPs were established prior to the enemy moving in. Remember, the commander visualized how this was gonna go down, where the enemy was going, and where they were gonna use the terrain for their advantage. What would their maneuver look like? Also, remember from a previous digest how we talked about the principles of direct fire control and how they were applied here. All right, open up ATP 3-21.10, Infantry Rifle Company, Appendix Charlie, to learn about direct fire planning and SOPs and the steps that you have to take. And you can download your doctrine from the Army Publishing Director website at armypubs.army.mil.